Welcome back. We want to look at Empower Youth for Economic Development this morning. And in Nigeria, many youth are unemployed as an adult. But we want to look at how we can empower the youth for economic development in this country. And today we have our guest in the studios. We have Mix Kelmix as a coordinator to make room, and we have Karima Ramin as a vice chairman African Network Youth Policy Expert. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Okay, let me start with Mix. Okay. Let me, let me ask mm -hmm. Karim. Are they, are they um, a mix? Are they responding, the youth? Are they responding? Yes, yes. We have gathered around uh, 40 change makers. We call them change makers, change agents from across 20 different African countries. We also have representations from nine European countries. The young people are responding quite well. They do understand the responsibility that has been invested in them, that they are the ones, they are representatives of their communities, not only of themselves as individuals, they are representatives of groups of young people that they have come here to represent. Uh, yes, so I I think they are responding very well and we have just started yesterday so today is the first intense day of the training so we will see how will it go but yesterday talking about expectations contributions motivations young people are really passionate and determined to take action and actually bring some sort of solutions to the problems that they have identified and also we believe that it's not just these young people but every single young person in Nigeria is a change maker so we need to build this capacity of them being able to identify a problem, being whatever problem it is, from a dirty street to poverty to nothing to eat or to unemployment. If we are able to identify these problems that we face as young people in Africa or in Europe, and if we take charge in finding a solution to those problems, then there are many opportunities that can help them to transfer this problem solution into a project to receive funding. But what has happened is that a lot of people expect. We have this expectation culture. If I identify a problem, oh, it's not my issue. Let the government solve it. No. Let's become change makers, identify a problem, take it as our responsibility and solve it. I'm going to ask um, Karim, how can I become that change maker? How can I become a change maker? I don't have a job. I don't have who to sponsor me. I don't have... I can go to school, I can pay my school fees. How can I now become a change maker? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. And uh, yesterday, we had the same question uh, in, in the panels and workshops we did uh, yesterday. And my answer was, uh, I have to be a change maker by taking a responsibility. It's a shared responsibility because we have to move from being indifferent and blaming only the other side, that, that, uh, that, uh, which is like the source of the problem. We share part of our responsibility and we have to participate because uh, if we don't take actions, if we don't own and master our own destiny, our own fate, our own solutions, we're going to be out of the whole cycle of the decision-making process. Sometimes it's a bit difficult because uh, at the legislation level and uh, at the regulation level, it's very difficult to uh, uh, give a room to young people to be part of the table and negotiate their own solutions. But uh, I think if we leave the empty chair, we're not going to be part of the process. So I think it's also part of the initiative of young people you know, to advocate for having a seat in the table and be a change maker and be a voice their uh, uh, voice their opinion and be um, like um, move from a culture of protesting not having uh, a job etc to a culture of proposition they have to to uh, to provide alternative because sometimes uh, government officials uh, have the public will, but they don't have the solutions. So nothing is working, the youths are not doing anything. What do you think she can do, and the youth out there? I think what where we need to start is to take action. Go outside on your street, go outside in your community, and find the problem that you feel the most passionate about be it whatever it is, unemployment or whatever. Find that problem, but be passionate about it. And start thinking of what can be possibly done in order to solve that problem. And start with yourself. Don't start with the government or public offices. Yeah, you want to add yeah. to what? Uh, what? Um, I think it starts with civic engagement. 
uh, as Mick said, you can start from your home, from your street, from your small neighborhood and small community. Uh, volunteering is very important because it is the first school that teaches us civic engagement. If you don't start with that, then it's going to be uh, ver very hard for you to, to make a change because you start with yourself, you reflect it on your community, and then you have a whole uh, bigger picture. If you're out of the system, if you're not part of any civil society organizations, find the nearest civil society organization to your neighborhood and join in, you know, uh, and, and this is something really important. And then you can channel out and do networking what, with your peers. And, uh, you know, if, if you learn something and you teach it and transfer it to uh, your mm. peers in your neighborhoods and your community, I think you, you, you would form a network of change makers and, you know, many voices, you know, could count. So sometimes it, you see in bigger changes, it started small in a very smallest community. And now with social networking, you know, uh, the, the, the causes uh, that we, we are defending, you know, gets wider exposure. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a step forward. Start where start you're start from. Where start, you're from. Start where you're from. From your home, from your neighborhood, from your community. And I think uh, they, will, they will know the difference. Okay, that's another caller yeah. here. What you're saying is change maker. Maybe you need yeah. to reiterate it again. A change maker starting from you. Um, you've engaged with Tom Nandari Youth. What is that major challenge you saw while discussing with them? You think they quickly need to change? Um, there are a few challenges, mm -hmm. okay, for Nigerian youth or even for the youth that have come from Europe. From Europe. Uh, and, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest challenge of no matter where you come from is that expectation culture, what I already mentioned before, mm. is that we don't want to take action of the problems we face. We expect somebody else to be in charge of our own problems. If I don't have a job, people see, oh, it's not my fault. My country is doing bad in economics, so there are not enough jobs for people. So the government must be extremely bad. That might be right, and that might be wrong. But we need to stop expecting public offices or anybody else to solve our problems. But we need to become extremely active civil society, keep our eyes open, our ears open, our hands ready to work, and be able to start working in solving these problems instead of expecting them to be okay. solved. Okay. Right. Uh, to I think I'm, I'm going to uh, have an advice on both sides. Yes. Uh, first of all, for young people in civil society, let's get out of the culture of wait, wait and see and uh, blame the others. It's a shared responsibility and they have to take action. If the government doesn't take action, they should take the initiative. Uh, for the government, I think they have to establish uh, um, institutionalized mechanism of dialogue. How do you mean? Uh, I mean, amending the legislation, whether at the constitutional level or at the uh, normal laws uh, where the, um, the uh, proposed institutionalized mechanism uh, at the national or also at the local level mm -hmm. because especially at the municipalities this is where participatory democracy starts and uh, young people have uh, an opportunity to voice their opinion on local politics uh, in municipalities and, and local government in general but it should be uh, uh, done uh, through the um, amending the legislation to allow them uh, uh, practice it on the ground. Have a seat for them in uh, in the table and of the negotiation, and uh, listen to them. Because when there is a disconnection between citizens and government, then the crisis starts. Also, I think uh, the change in the discourse in terms of communication. Because sometimes uh, governments, in general, and this is not the case of Nigeria, government speaks a jargon that is not understood by young people. So they have to change the rhetoric and you know be in their mind. To, uh, to be able to communicate with them, listen to them, and reflect their needs in the policies that they're doing. Okay. And finally, what word do you have out there? What, what word do you have for the youths in rounding off? Yes, I think the biggest advice that I can give is recognize yourself as a change maker. All of us are change makers if we want to be change makers. Uh, yes, and keep your eyes open, your ears open, and your hands ready to work. Go out there, identify a problem, don't expect, and begin 
looking for solutions okay. to whatever one word, problems. Yeah. One word. Uh, one word uh, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, for change. Uh, uh, in Nigeria, you have great youth and great talents. Don't be spectators with change. Lead the change. Okay. I'm a change yes. maker myself, yes. isn't it? <laughs> I'm a change maker and it starts from me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Mix Kelims. Um, thank you for coming. And I also want to thank Kareem Rangnim. Thank you so much for coming on this segment of the program. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.